Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be covering creating a health system. This video was actually a request, so it's going to have a slight twist. I'm not just going to be doing a normal bar or numbers. I'm actually going to have an image that I change the color depending on the percentage that the user has left. I'm going to have five different colors. I'm going to have a green, a light green, an orange, a red, and then a black for when the player is all out of health. As always, if you have any questions or any requests, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or we also have a Discord that's linked in the description, so feel free to join that and ask any questions you have there as well. While you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. So to go ahead and get started, if you're creating a new project, make sure you use the first person template. If you're working on a project that already exists, just make sure that you have a player controller. So to go ahead and begin, I'm gonna bring in my health image. If you're using a health image or creating a health image, the one thing you wanna make sure that you do is have it in a gray scale. This is important as we'll be changing the different colors. And whenever you're multiplying the different colors, if you have something that isn't in gray scale, multiplying it by green may mess up the colors to where it's not exactly where you want it. So now we'll go ahead and create our widget. And this is what our interface is if you've never used a widget before. And we'll simply name it health bar. And we want to make sure that we drag an image in. This is the only thing that I'm going to have on our UI. And I'm going to anchor it in the top left corner. I'm going to put it 50 and 50 in the X and Y. I'm going to size it 600 by 338, which is probably larger than you wanted in your game. But as that's the focus of the video, I'm having it be large. So the next thing you want to do is go down to your brush. And then you're going to add an image. And it'll just be whatever your health bar image is. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a color of green. And I'm defaulting it to just the regular green. And again, as I go down, I'll switch it to light green and then switch it to orange and then switch it to red and then finally switch it to black. One thing that is also important to note is this is variable up at the top. It should default to checked, but if it's not, you want to make sure it is. This makes it accessible from other blueprints. So that way we can change the color variable when we take damage. I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of my image just to bar for ease. And then we can go ahead and save and compile and go back to our main scene. The next thing we're gonna do is create another blueprint. This one will be an actor. And I'm simply gonna call this one health. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do in this is create your variables. We're gonna have two. Our first variable is going to be our health value. And you want this one to just be an int. And our second one will be our color. This will just make it easier for us to set our image to the specific color that we want. And you can go ahead and just search it and we're going to do a linear color. Next, we can go ahead and create our functions. We're going to have two. Our first one will just call damage. And our second one we'll call set image. Now in our event graph, we want to make sure to have something for our begin play. We want to set defaults for our values. So the first thing we'll do is set our health value to 100. This can obviously be whatever number you want it to be. I'm just doing it as percentages. So I'm saying it's at 100% right off the bat. And then the next thing we're going to do is set our color. And I'm just going to make this the same green that I did in the widget. And then finally, we'll go ahead and call our set image function. And that's the entirety of our basic event graph for the health system. Begin play is just called when the scene starts, and so we just want to make sure that our defaults are set at that time. So we'll go ahead and compile this and we'll move on to our damage function. Our damage function is going to be the largest function that we create in this tutorial. Now what we want to do with our damage function is as soon as it's called, we want to subtract health from our player, so we'll go ahead and do that. We want to set our health value. 
and we're going to get an int minus and then we want this to actually be our current health value. And I'm going to minus equals our health value by 10. This number can obviously be whatever you would like it to be. This is simply just how much health is deducted each time you take damage. Now what we're gonna do is have a series of four branches. Each of these branches are gonna be checking our current health to determine the color that we should be setting our image to. So I'll go ahead and start with the first branch. And with this branch, if it's true, we're going to set our color to green. And then do our set image function. And then the condition that we'll be checking will be if our health is greater than or equal to 80. So essentially what I'm saying here is simply if our health is greater than or equal to 80, then I wanna set the color to be green for my health image. Again, these values can be whatever you want. I'm going to be doing 80% or greater for dark green, 60% or greater for light green, 30% or greater for orange, 0% or greater for red, and anything below zero will be black. If you're doing your own values, you need to keep in mind that the order of your branches are important. If you're doing greater than, then you want to make sure that your higher numbers are higher up the branches. For instance, I'm going 80, 60, 30, 0. If you're doing less than, then you want to make sure your lower numbers are at the top of the branches. To explain why this is the case, say my health is 90. Obviously 90 is greater or equal to 80 and I want the color to be green. But if I start with my lower one, 90 is also greater than or equal to zero. So it would accept that as true and then make my color black even though I still have health. So now to continue with our branches, we'll go ahead and go from our false, we'll make another branch. And we'll just copy and paste this except we'll change this to be 60, and then we'll use the same value of the current set. And then we'll go ahead and copy paste these as well for if it's true, but this time I'm gonna set my color to just a light green. And now I'll just go ahead and take this, and we'll copy paste this, and we'll go if this is false, then we want to check if our health is less than or equal to 30. And if it is greater than 30, then we'll be changing our color to orange. And then if it's not, then we'll go ahead and create another branch. And this will be our final branch. We'll have this be zero. And again, we'll drag our health value down except this color is just going to be red. And then we'll just copy these two. And then if it's not greater than zero, in other words, if you're out of health, we'll go ahead and set this color to black. We'll go ahead and save and compile this. I'll zoom out so you can better see it. And again, all I'm doing here is deducting the amount of damage I want done to my health setting that to the current health value, and then checking the corresponding branches to see what I want my image to be in response to the health. So we'll go ahead and go to set image. So for set image, we're gonna go ahead and start by getting all widgets of class. And then we want to do our health bar class. You wanna make sure it's top level only as this just checks the direct children of the viewport. And the viewport just contains which widgets are already active. So if this is checked, it'll just be going through less widgets, which is what we want. Now you can go ahead and create a for each loop. And we're going to have this array be our found widgets. And then we want to cast to health. And then we're gonna take our array element and put that as the object. And then finally, what we wanna do is set our color And then we wanna make sure that our target is the image that we're wanting to change. So you wanna make sure to pull from your cast and then type in the bar. 
and then we'll set our target here. Sorry, this is setting the color of a widget. So you want to go from here and then set our color. And then you want to make sure that this color is our current class color. And that's the whole function for our set image. So what we're doing here is checking for all of our health bar widgets, looping through all of them to go ahead and check if we can cast them. Once we cast them, we go ahead and get our bar image within that widget, and we set that to the target for changing our color, and then we change the color to the current color of our class. And this color has the value that we set in our damage function. So we can go ahead and save and compile this, and then we're gonna go back to the scene and create our final blueprint which is going to be a box trigger. And we'll just name this damager. And this blueprint will be very simple. We're just gonna be getting the children of the actor that we collide with because we'll be colliding with the actor of our character controller. So we wanna make sure that our health is a child of that. So we'll go ahead and drag from other actor and do get all children. And then from there, we're going to do a for each loop through our children. And we'll take the array of our children to put it into that for each loop. And then we're going to do something similar to our get image function, where we're going to cast to our health. And then call our damage function. And you want to make sure that this array element goes to the object of your cast. And that's the entirety of our damager blueprint. All we're doing is saying whenever we overlap with an actor, check the child actors, go through looping them, seeing if you can cast them as a health, and if you can, then cause damage to the player. So we'll go ahead and compile this. And make sure that you do the target to your damage. So we'll go ahead and compile that now. And we'll go back to the scene. And what you're going to want to do is go up to blueprints. You're going to want to find your open level blueprint. And we're going to create an event begin play in this. And we're doing this so that way we can create our health bar widget and attach it to our viewport so that way our player can see it. So we're simply just going to create widget. We want to make sure it's of the correct health bar class. Our owning player is going to be our player controller. And then we're going to add it to our viewport. And then you want to make sure the target of the viewport is the widget. So you can go ahead and compile and save that. And now we're done with scripting. So we'll go back to our scene. And you're going to want to make sure to drag in your damager into the scene. I'm just going to put it over by this box so we can easily find it. And then you're going to want to go to whatever your player controller is and you're going to drag in a health actor onto your first person character. And we'll just leave it called as health. And we're doing this again so that way when we interact with the box trigger, it will see that actor as a child of it and know that we're supposed to take damage. So we'll go ahead and save. And we'll go ahead and play. So as you can see, it's currently green. And I would be at 90 now, 80 now, 70, now it's light green, 60, 50, now it's orange, 40, 30, 20, now it's red, 10, 0, and now it's black. So our health system works exactly the way we want it to. As a recap, we kept track of a health value and represented it in a non-explicit manner through the changing of colors to our health image. And then we also made a trigger box that would call a damage function, which you can attach to your enemies. As always, I hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.